Hey everybody, this is Freddie with LeviathanScuba.com. Welcome to the Leviathan series on how to stretch a tank longer. Whatever you want to call it, how to conserve air, how to increase your dive time. We're going to cover everything you're going to need to increase that time underwater. We'll get to that in just a minute. You know, I have a superpower, and so do you. We know how to breathe underwater, and it's an amazing thing. And we go to great lengths to learn how to spend time underwater. Why not spend as much time as you can? I mean, you took the training, you bought the gear, you took time off work to go on vacation, which wasn't cheap. You're out on a dive boat. You might as well spend as much time under there getting the best bang for your buck as you possibly can. And I have seen on the internet what's out there as far as all the different top 10 tricks and things like that, but I've never seen a full, full package, conscientious, everything you can do from skill levels to equipment. So we're going to cover it all right now in this series. All righty. So, New divers often ask, how long does a tank last? It's not an easy question to answer because, gee, there's so many fast factors to that, from beginner to expert to types of gear to different things, depth and all that. And we're going to cover it all. But I will say this, the average diver on a vacation on a dive trip, you know, can last anywhere from about 45 minutes to maybe an hour, hour and 10 minutes for a scuba tank. I've seen the fastest on a trip actual Certified diver goes through an 80 cubic foot tank in about 20 minutes. In a competition, I started out with 3,000 PSI one time and at 45 feet, I went two hours and four minutes and came up with 592 pounds of, of, uh, of air left. And I'm not a super athlete or anything like that. So it's, it's oftentimes not age related and it's really not even physical shape. Although you're going to have an advantage if you're in better physical shape. More air equals longer dives. Increased bottom time means more things to see, more opportunities to see things underwater. If you're a photographer, you get more time to, to spend, you know, taking pictures or videos of fish, right? And so, um, I, I want to say, too, that it doesn't matter your age and it really, like I said, doesn't matter your athleticism because, like I say, you're in better shape than me and yet maybe I can stretch a tank longer than you or maybe you can stretch a tank a lot longer than me. But anyone can improve and that's what we're going to do here, okay? First, my first point to ask you is how much time do you need underwater? You want to say as much time as possible, but the reality is, is on many dive trips, they kind of limit how much time you can stay under there. You're not so happy if they say, we want you up in 40 minutes and they're really, you know, crazy about trying to get you back on the boat in 40 minutes. You want to spend as much time as you can, but you also have to be courteous to those on the boat. If I can stay in the water two hours and you're done in 40 minutes, you don't want to have to sit on the boat, twiddling your thumbs, waiting, and, or I'm waiting an hour and 20 minutes for me to get back on the boat. So sometimes the strategy is if you can stretch a tank really a good amount of time, you get in the water first. You're diving, you're consuming air, you're down there, and the people that know that they, are, they'll, they can't last very long with a the tank, they get in after that and then they're going to come up a little bit before you. So you kind of balance it. And a good dive organization out there on the boat or in the resort, they're going to try to stagger people that way. So if you're good at stretching a tank, you actually are going to get a longer dive out of those that aren't. And yet everybody will get back on the boat in a similar time frame. Okay? Um, now, there is a lot you can do. You can, it, it's either equipment-based usually or skill based. So we're going to kind of break these videos up. We're going to start with equipment based strategy. Okay. One of the first things you want to learn is proper weighting. You've heard about it. If you've dove for a while, you know what I mean. But let me say that most people are overweighted. Why? Because they were trained that way. They were taught that way. If you're a newer diver, it's so much easier for an instructor to teach you in a swimming pool if they overweight you a little bit because you can compensate by putting some air in your BC and then trying to find that neutral zone rather than if you're too light 
trying to swim down all the time, that's a much more difficult thing to do in a class or in a pool when you have five or six different students in there. So most people were trained to be heavy. So I'm gonna say getting your weight perfect. Can you imagine hauling around four extra pounds of lead underwater? You're having to swim against that. It's pulling you down, you're swimming up to offset it, and you have to constantly use energy and air to overcome that. So what if you just got your weight perfect? What's perfect? It's perfect if you can hover perfectly still with half of a lung full of air. And then you inhale, you rise, you exhale, you sink. So get to that point first, you're gonna stretch your tank longer. It's gonna allow your air consumption to be less, okay? Now, streamlining gear also. This is a tricky one. Um, people buy scuba gear. They really don't know exactly how it's supposed to fit. Oftentimes they get something bigger, bulkier than they really need or more stuff. So would you rather, would you think more aerodynamic going down the highway is a sports car or a travel trailer? It's the same thing underwater with you. If you have all this stuff on you and you're this big full of, you know, then you're gonna be more difficult to get through that water hyd hydrodynamic and be less hydrodynamic than you would be if you were much more streamlined. So let's talk a little bit about it. Accessories, tuck them away, put them in pockets, try to hide them, try to get them close to your body. Extra hoses, it's great to have them streamlined. A shorter hose is better sometimes and you don't have this regulator with this big hose coming out. How about less hoses? The typical student learns with four hoses. One is your regulator, one is your octopus, one are your gauges, your pressure gauge, and the other one is your BC hose. Do you know you can actually dive with two less hoses? If you see a number of the videos of, of us scuba diving out there in the wild, we only have two. How did we get rid of those two? I still have a regulator in my mouth, but my octopus is not a separate hose, not a separate regulator. It's built onto my BC, so I've eliminated one hose. My computer is a wrist computer with a transmitter on the back. I don't need a hose with a pressure gauge. Very simple. I've eliminated two hoses. Another part of uh, tucking away your, your accessories and things like that is the don't bring it if you don't need it. So, you know, a lot of guys, they have gear all over the place, right? And maybe you have some slates or you have your, your you know, camera and a GoPro and your video light and your photo strobe and all these different kind of things. But on this dive, you need to pick what you're gonna do. If you're gonna shoot video, bring your video light, leave your strobes back. I'm just giving an example. If you don't need it, don't bring it. Not to say you don't have some safety devices with you, things like that. I say that for the trolls out there. They're going to say, yeah, but I bring my blah every single dive. I get, I get it. I get it. But you know what? If you don't need it, don't bring it. it, it the, the, the smaller you can become, the more hydrodynamic you can become, the less air you're going to use. Okay? So it just makes sense. If you don't need it, don't bring it. Okay? Next, we're going to talk a little bit about the type of BCs out there, okay? So pause for just a minute and I will grab one. So, okay, next I'm gonna talk about the BCD, the BCD of choice, okay? So this would be a typical jacket style BC. Now, BCDs are not the most hydro hydrodynamic piece of equipment there is anyway, right? And you have, Depending on size, you have a lot more bulk to your body. Well, you have to push that through the water, okay? So I just wanna show you a couple things to think about when you buy your next BC or you buy your first BC. First of all, if you're ever gonna air, try to air a little bit on the side of smaller than bigger. Less bulk means less air consumption, less to push through the water, and it fits you better, okay? This is a jacket style, so it has inflation all in the back and on the sides. But I wanted to turn this sideways to kind of show you something that happens underwater. When you use a jacket style, not many people think about this, but this pokes out from your body, under your arms, behind your back a little bit, and it's solid material here. I'm gonna call that a scoop. This is gonna scoop water as you're trying to swim through the water. This is grabbing water, right? 
on both sides. So you have two big scoops on a jacket style BC. Something to think about when you buy your next BC. The technology has advanced in my opinion, and you'll have to check out some of our other videos about the jacket style versus the traveler style. We have one of those, and also the individual BCs themselves. You may have been trained on this. It's normal for you. However, there are advantages to a back inflate BC. I'll show you that next. <laughs> we now have a back inflate BC, nicknamed a travel BC. They're usually much more slight, much lighter in weight, and they're a lot less bulky. And frankly, they don't have as much lift as many other BCs, but I'm gonna ask you a question. Why do you need 64 pounds of lift? If you're truly neutrally buoyant, 29 pounds of lift is gonna get you to the surface just as quickly. Okay, but the one thing I wanna point out here is so much less bulk. There's no scoop here like on the jacket style. This bladder is behind you and it even, this particular one, the Oceanic Biolite has a bungee system that sucks the bladder in keeping it quite a bit more streamlined. It's stretchy and it pulls it in. So the, the point I'm trying to make with this video is that you don't have this big scoop. You're not grabbing a lot of water. There is distance between your back and the bladder itself. So it's less uh, restrictive. It's, it's gonna flow through the water so much easier. And because the bladder is kind of minimized, then you're a little bit more hydrodynamic. You're gonna use less air with this BC than you would with a larger, more bulkier jacket style BC, okay? So good fitting equipment, that's important. Baggy, loose, oversized. If you're supposed to be wearing a medium BC and you're wearing a large or an extra large because you got it cheap or because somebody gave it to you, you're still gonna pay for that in the long run because you're gonna use more air. So, okay, one thing to think about. Um, don't bring it if you don't have to. One of the things I talked about eliminating some of the gear is you have a lot of people that have redundant systems. Okay, I can see, I can hear some of the old timers right now clicking the computer off because they're gonna bring two computers and by God, they're gonna bring their pony bottle and they're gonna bring this and that. Now there's nothing wrong with that. However, for your typical dive, recreationally, you just don't need a lot of that. So I'm gonna say, I talk people out of buying equipment quite, quite often, where you'd think I should talk them into it. But what I mean by that is, don't spend the extra 500 to $1,000 for the second dive computer. What's the worst case scenario? Recreational dive, out there on a boat, you're with dive masters, you're with other people. What's the worst thing that happens? Your battery dies. <sighs> I gotta have a second computer because, no, no, you don't, you don't. You could dive with your watch if you wanted to. Or worst case scenario, you surface. If you're so deep into your dive and you don't know how long you can last, then you start to surface and you have no challenges, okay? So you don't have to have all the extra pieces and parts. I see people with dual pressure gauges because they had a pressure gauge fail one time. Oh my gosh, once in, what, a thousand dives or something? I don't know. No reason to have the redundant system sometimes, unless you're a tech diver, or you're going extra deep or caves or whatever. Okay? So, next I'm gonna talk a little bit about staying warm. So the Caribbean is 80 degrees, say, that's a nice recreational warm water dive, but if your body was 80 degrees, you'd be dead you'd be hypothermic. So your body is constantly fighting and it's using energy to stay warm, even in an 80 degree dive. I'm gonna make the case for wetsuits. Yes, we all know it's needed on a cold dive, but what about an 80 degree or an 82 degree dive? Your body's gonna use more oxygen and it's gonna use more air out of your scuba tank if you're chilly or cooling. And maybe your first day or two, it's no, no big deal, but the longer you dive, the more dives you do, your core temperature comes down, it gets worse and worse. And your body fighting that uses up oxygen to help keep you warm. So that's part of it too. Um, consider some wetsuit accessories. Some of you don't wear booties, some of you do. How about gloves? Have you ever considered wearing a hood? And maybe not a hood like this, that's a colder water hood, but, 
consider wearing even a fun hood, one of the fantasy hoods that we promote, or, or a smaller hood or a, or a you know, beanie or something like that that's so made out of neoprene that can increase your warmth. Also, maybe a thicker suit. Most of the people, I would say, dive a three mil thick a wetsuit for the warmer water dives in the Caribbean. But a lot of gals, a lot of people without their Arctic layer, their fat layer, they, they are colder. So the, a thicker suit, perhaps a five mil, they're not super thick and hard to get on these days. They have super ultra stretch, slide right on. You can get a thicker suit, stay warmer, you're gonna use your air much more efficiently, okay? Next thing is, and it's a simple thing, but keep your gear serviced. You can see that little stream of bubbles coming out of the back of somebody's tank or their regulator or the low pressure hose on your regulator has a little nick in it and air's coming out or O-rings on the scuba tank. You know, any air lost is air wasted, in my opinion. You could stretch a tank longer. Um, have your regulator serviced. A poorly serviced regulator oftentimes free flows. We've all had it happen. You jump in the water, you get ready to jump in the water and it's you know, and how do I shut it off? How many, you know, five, six, seven seconds. How many breaths was that? 20, 30 breaths worth of air that you just lost out of a regulator that did that? Or sometimes on BCDs, the inflator itself, the Schrader valve goes and it starts to leak very slowly. And sometimes you can't see it because it's leaking inside the BC and it's slowly filling up and you have to keep dumping and that air's going to waste. You're not getting the opportunity to use it, okay? Now, in the next video, we're going to continue discussing what you can do to conserve air. And we're going to continue on with the gear portion. And then another video, we'll get into the skill levels that it's going to take. I sure hope this helps because that's why I do it. Consider checking out LeviathanScuba.com. Make it a great day. You know, the difference between a new diver and an experienced diver is quite often the tips and the tricks they learn along the way. That's why we share these things with you. We hope that it helped you in some way. And you know, you can help us if you'll just hit that like button down below. And if you can think of anybody else that might benefit from these, why don't you try sharing it? That'll help get the word out. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and we'll let you know when the next one comes out. Have an awesome day.